Hello, today I want to make a comparison video between these two knives the Bark River Gunny Hunter and the Third Neven F1 two very popular knives I wanted to do this video a long time ago but okay here we go um, okay let's start with the Bark River the Gunny Hunter my version comes in CPM 3V steel and a nice leather sheath. Okay. The Falkneven F1. There are two options. It comes either in this Zytel sheath with a nylon cord or in a leather sheath. I chose the Zytel for two reasons. First of all, it's very lightweight and low profile and it fits into the concept overall for the F1 which is very uh, weather resistant and temperature resistant and Zytel is let's say more resistant to hot and cold weather than let's say Kydex. Now to the knives themselves Okay, let's start with the easy one, the F1, very popular knife and it's been used as you might be able to see, convex grind, very thick spine, flat spine so you can start a uh, fire with a ferro rod on it. It comes with a laminated VG10 steel so that means the core in the middle you have a layer of VG10 and of on both sides you have softer 420 steel so this kind of emulates a very tough but at the same time somewhat hard and very resistant steel I didn't change the profile because I like it as it is and out of all my convex grind uh, blades this is probably the one that's the easiest to sharpen so if you want to start sharpening convex grind uh, knives on uh, whetstone this is a good knife to start with it's really easy you can I mean you can go you can make mistakes but this is the easiest one to start with I would say uh, the handle is made of out of so-called thermal, thermal run with a good texturing so it's really grippy in all conditions hot, cold, wet, dry, everything and as you can see uh, the, the, the steel goes all the way through it comes out here at the end as in form of a pummel but the thermal run goes all around it so when you grab the handle you're never in, con in direct contact with the steel so this is an advantage in let's say in very cold conditions without gloves you can still relatively comfortably use it this hole for lanyard or something yeah this is my one of my complaints about this knife I don't know but I didn't put it a bit lower so here if you wanted to put lanyard in it your pinky finger goes over it I don't know. Overall, very good knife. I like it. When you watch YouTube videos or, or other reviews, there are all kinds of, uh, uh, let's say, reviews about the knife, especially the, the blade. I must say that I like it. I mean, you have to know what you can expect of it. It's VG10. So, yeah, some people complain that they had it uh, chipped. I hadn't, I didn't have this problem. I mean, I never really abused it that much. I mean, I tried, I, I actually betoned with it. But the hard use of this knife is, in my opinion, more limited by the blade length and not by the material so yeah oh yeah and one more impression that I have I don't know 
if anyone shares this but when I first got it it's well it was new and you could not see the lamination lines I don't know if you can see it maybe now oh, oh, probably not I cannot, I cannot focus close enough for this yeah yeah maybe you can see it now anyway but after the first sharpening the lamination line became visible so the contact point between the 420 and the VG10 steel and after this first sharpening I noticed a significant uh, improvement in the, in the actual performance of this knife I don't know if it's just mine or it's just in my head but I really think it's, it's it after the first sharpening I just removed enough material to really put the edge into its optimal place uh, at least that's my opinion hmm. now to the Gunny Hunter made out of uh, CPM3V there's also an A2 version and I think an LMX this is the 3V uh, there's a regular Gunny and a Gunny Hunter this is the Hunter and well it came this is kind of how to call it a shoulder of a flat portion on the top and I really didn't like it so I removed it by hand on a whetstone and the finishing was done on a, on a belt but the main work was done on, on Naniva stones it was a lot of work but it was successful and then after that I liked the performance much more why? because as you can see it's relatively thick, thick four millimeters but not a lot of belly for comparison oops here we have its bigger brother the uh, Bravo one but the LT version and here you can see they have the exact same thickness of four millimeters but the Bravo has more belly than the Gunny so overall it performs a little bit better Better, especially out of the box when it had this shoulder on the top. I mean, for cutting rope or, or paracord, it's not a problem. But when you work with uh, wood, yeah, and you use the whole side of the flanks here, it's better to have, to have a full height convex, I think. Well, why? Why did I choose to compare these two? Because they are in a category that I would call a relatively compact all-round camp knives. And this is exactly what they are. Uh, and with all tools that are uh, like jack of all trades, master of none, they perform reasonably well at most tasks but don't excel at anything really and this is the same for these two knives if you wanted to if you don't ca uh, if you can't get both of them and have to choose and uh, want to choose between one of them which one to choose well this one is more for rough weather conditions it's stainless and as I said, the, the handles are made out of more grippy material, so wet and cold doesn't bother you. Whereas this CPM3, as you probably know, is not fully stainless, it's semi stainless with around 7.5% chromium, so you have to take care a bit about um, corrosion resistance. But it's very tough, so for hard use, no problem with it. Uh, like most Bark River knives, the, the uh, handle scales are really smooth, which is nice, it feels nice in hand, and the Coke bottle shape is really er ergonomic. Some people claim that it's too slick, it slips in your hand. I only had it slip, even rotate within my, ha my hand like this once. And it was only when my hand was wet and the knife was wet, so 
yeah, then it's really hard to use. But in normal conditions, it's not pro not a problem. So yeah, and well, the the F1 looks and feels a little bit more generic. Uh, this is a little bit more refined. You cannot see the Bark River in, engraving and the and I think the the name of the steel was put in there because as I said I reprofiled it whole flanks. For the F1 I can add that here for comparison I the yeah, only other fuck even that I have is the cold knife. Um, Made a video about that before, and the cold knife comes with the new laminated COS steel. Why do I say that? Because the new version of the F1, the so called F1 Pro, comes also in laminated COS, which is supposedly better. I don't know, it's too soon to judge because I don't have this knife for too long, and this is my only knife with. I mean, it's US, it seems good, but it's too early for a final verdict. But overall, I must say that I do not have any problems with the laminated VG10. If you know what to expect and know how to use it and yeah, and how to maintain the blade, then yeah, it's really not a problem. I would even go as far as say that it's a uh, yeah, really a forgiving or user-friendly version. So you have to take care of, care of it, but it's easy to take care of it. Yeah. Whereas this, this is uh, if you want to go with, with uh, CPM 3V, you have to know what you are getting yourself into. It. I mean, it's really tough steel, not as easy to, yeah, to keep and put into shape. I mean, I know it for sure because I, I reprofiled it by hand, so it's really a lot of work. And you have to take care of it uh, to keep it from from rusting, but it's not really a huge deal. It's not a, a carbon steel. It's, it has a reasonable amount of chromium to prevent most of rusting. Yeah, yeah again, for comparison. Yeah. Okay. And a final shot in comparison with the two knives. Yeah. Oh yeah, one more thing. I mentioned the new F1 Pro. I don't know if I want to buy it. First of all, even though it comes with the new steel, it also comes in a new uh, blade shape which looks more like the S1, it's a bigger brother. I think that works for the S1, but for the F1 I really liked the shape of this blade. That's one point. The other point is that, uh, f at least for now, you can only get the F1 Pro with a huge plastic case and uh, um, the DC4 sharpening stone, which I already have, so it really pumps up the price makes it really a lot more expensive but unnecessarily. If I want to buy the F1 Pro I just want the F1 Pro and that's it without any accessories. So for now I'm staying with the original F1. And because it's um, so generic at least in appearance there are many Chinese cheap copies of that knife, so you have to be aware of that. So when you buy it, you have to be sure that's the original uh, Ferkneven one, because of obviously the the copies are cheaper, but not only in price but also in quality. Yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.